What's up, ChuckleFox, and welcome to another tutorial series. You all have actually surprisingly expressed a lot of interest in having another full ship tutorial series. So, I'm here to fill that request. We are going to be doing another full ship tutorial. And we're going to build another cruiser. We're going to replace the one that we made in the first tutorial series. In this tutorial series, my goal for this one is to make the videos a lot shorter, a lot better tips, and just overall higher quality in total. Now, some of you may be coming into this going, uh, none of my stuff is very good. I can't figure out how to make stuff look good. I don't think I'm capable of giving you a stop. Take a deep breath and let Papa Wrench lead the way. This first video is going to be focused around making your guns. The guns are the most important part whenever making and starting your ship. You need to figure out how big your cannons are going to be because that will also judge the size of your ship. If you want it to be a little bit thinner, you're going to need to make a smaller gun, but always make the gun first. But to be able to make the gun first, you need to first design a shell. And I also highly recommend that you make some kind of a platform that you have these turret bases on, the turret parameters. It helps greatly whenever mapping out how big you want your guns to be. It also gives you some kind of a visualization of about how big the gun will be. So then you can also kind of get a general idea of about how wide your ship is going to be. It's not going to be so much about the length. It's more of the width, especially whenever you're considering what kind of ship you want to make. So if you make some kind of a conventional ship, definitely take into consideration how big your gun is going to be and what it's going to be. So in this case, we're going to do a cruiser. So in the case for a cruiser, we are obviously not going to be using the 17x17, 15x15, 13x13, so on and so forth, because those are way too large. That is more for super battleship and regular battleships. So we are going to be looking more towards the 7x7 and the 9x9. These are going to be more reasonable when it comes to our cruisers. Now, if you want to make a bigger gun, of course, it's your ship. Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. I'm showing you how I do things. But before we even start placing any blocks on a turret base for our guns, we need to decide what caliber we want and what kind of shell we want to fire. So let's design a shell. When it comes to being able to design the shell for what you want for your gun, you need to have a certain caliber that you want it to be, or a general range of a caliber that you want it to be. So in this case, on this ship, I want to favor having smaller guns so I can have more of them and have fi faster firing rate than having fewer guns with larger caliber for this specific ship. Sometimes that may not work in your, in your favor. It may not work for the design or the purpose that you want this ship to be. So that's another thing that we also need to take into consideration is what do we want this ship to be able to go up against? Because that will also decide what kind of guns we should have and how many of them we should have, what caliber we should have, what their fire rate should be, so on and so forth. So in this case, we're going to set this ship out to be something that goes against early to mid game steel striders, gray talons craft, white flares, so on and so forth. So, with that in mind, we're going to want something more of an internal damage round. So, with something being as small as an 150 millimeter cannon, we aren't going to want to do some kind of a kinetic round. The kinetic round just won't quite cut it, in my opinion, in my personal preference. So instead, I'm going to favor more going towards an AP heat round. So an AP heat round, it literally is just armor-piercing head with a shape charge secondary and two to three high explosive war bodies behind it. We'll set our caliber up here to 150 millimeters and now we can see oh well we need a three meter auto loader in order to fit this in this gun. Now for those who are unaware there is a way that you can change that to where it is more optimized. So if we zoom in here on these numbers, you can see that our shell plus case length is 2400 millimeters. And so that requires us to have a three meter autoloader. Well, we can take that down to a two meter autoloader. So not only is it cheaper, we can fit more and it'll fire faster. So what we will be able to do there is that we want to downsize that shell plus case length. So from 2400 millimeters, to 2000 and under. So in this case, we have too many gunpowder casings. So we are just gonna start shaving some of it off. We're gonna replace one of the four modules with the two module, and now we'll come back down and look. Well, we're still too long, but 
there's a way you can fine tune it. You can come over here to the propellant amount and adjust it. And you see over here that it is changing the shell length. So we can adjust it all the way down here to where, boom, that is the farthest point before we get to where it needs a three meter auto loader. There you go. Your shell is optimized. Also, if you are interested in a full APS tutorial, leave down in the comments APS. And then with the amount of comments that I'll get on it will depend on if I actually do it or not. So now with our shell designed, the shell being a 150 millimeter using a two meter auto loader traveling at 952 meters a second with an AP of 22 and then our heat charges, we are ready to start designing the cannon. Since we have a lot smaller of a cannon caliber and we want this ship to be relatively small, especially since I want it to be a light cruiser with a cost range around 300 to 400k materials, we are going to favor having the 7x7 7 7 gun. Now whenever you're designing your gun, deciding what kind of turret base you want it to have, like a 1-axis one th uh, 3 meter or a 5 meter, here's the rule of thumb. A 3 meter is normally a good one for small and medium sized guns. I wouldn't normally recommend using a 1, a one meter 1-axis one turret, mainly because the bigger the turret base is, the more health it has, and also the faster it turns, especially on larger cannons. But a 5 meter really isn't necessary here, and it's also, you know, over half the price so we're gonna use a three meter here and since I love making my life harder and I'm just gonna help you all out by showing you how to make one of the hardest kinds of cannons a three barrel APS gun now, I'm not talking about making three barrels on the APS uh, mantlet itself I'm talking about having three separate gun systems on this one turret so let's get started I'm going to start with the five way here and you'll see why. So we're going to start off with that. We're going to put our firing piece here just to see how many gauge increasers are we actually going to need. So it's 60 millimeter. Add one and it's 120. Oh, now it's a 179. If you don't know, if this is your first tutorial and you don't know anything about APS, I'll give you a few tips. We'll show you how to adjust that caliber whenever we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and start placing down our coolers. The hardest part about making a three barrel cannon is mainly making sure that they have, all three of them have the same fire rate. The outer ones will have the same fire rate because they're mirrored, but the middle one won't because it's not the same size. So you have to take into consideration that you got to make some adjustments in order to make them fire at the same rate. So in this case, we see that we have a lot more coolers on this one, on the inside one, than we do on the outers. So a way we can get that is by around like that. And since I want to make sure that I have enough room in here for our auto loaders, we are going to put the little necks for this. Actually, we're going to do When it comes to placing down auto loaders and their clips, it is a rule of thumb that for every one auto loader like this, you want to try and have one clip on each side. That is the most efficient because that helps increase your fire rate, also lowering your cost because they are about 100 cost cheaper. Now, of course, that is more as you go up in, in uh, auto loader size, but in this case, it saves us 100. So now we are going to start like right here. We see here that we can do four auto loaders on that, four auto loaders on that, and that is connected here to this side one. So we now have an even amount of auto loaders and clips. Sometimes you are unable to get four on each side or four on uh, each face of a auto litter. So it's okay to do that, but try and limit the amount that you have with only one clip on it. 
that is the most inefficient. So here's the most compact that we're going to be able to get it. That's okay. We can use that open space later for recoil absorption, which we will need. We'll get to that later whenever we see how much we need. So now we place that down. I want us to have another layer of auto loaders, which is why I made sure that these have their have connecting faces down so we could literally just up here by the way for those who don't know in the prefab menu if you want to go by intervals of five use right mouse and then we can just come up here I am and then we can come up here like this I want all the guns to be pretty close together so I'm not gonna spread out the barrels here in the middle now you also want to take into consideration whenever making a turret neck how thick you want your deck to be since i'm not particularly too fond of what happened to the hms hood i would like to have some thicker deck armor so i no normally go with two layers of deck armor especially on cruisers and up destroyers eh, i'm not too worried because they're smaller and cheaper ships so we'll do two layers of deck armor there and then an exposed turret neck and then I like to curve the barrels or the coolers back that way. You want the APS firing piece to be farther back into the turret because that means more armor in front of it. Keeps it from getting knocked out as easily. So we're going to use some AA mantlets and our gauge increasers uh, had doubled, but that's okay. We can leave those there for now. And if we need more cooling, we can substitute them. So go ahead I like to put heavy barrels at the base of the guns because as a not only do I uh, like the looks of it I also uh, they are more armored so especially whenever it gets down to the base of the gun if it's getting hit I definitely don't want this getting knocked out because that gets knocked out guess what our uh, whenever our gun fires it basically the shell just comes out and looks like a fish that just fell out of fucking water it's not very good so now that we've got our gun, let's go ahead and adjust our caliber. So we want our caliber to be a 150 millimeter force desire gauge. You don't have to do that. The force desire gauge, what it does is that even though we set it to 150, it'll put it at 150. But if it get if a gauge increaser gets hit and it goes down more and it goes down to like a 120, it will continue to fire with that same shell. So that is only necessary on ones that you just don't want to do that. So we'll set this to up slot one required accuracy down to 0 0.01 sorry 0.1 we'll worry about synchronization later and then we'll just copy the clipboard and paste and now we can sign all of our auto loaders to the shell and see what our fire rates and recoil is like so our middle turret here has a fire rate of 34 and a half RPM. The outer ones have 38.4. So we could use a little bit more auto loaders on the middle gun. So in this case, what we could do is we can use a little bit of the space here, actually. So what we can do is let's see if we were to remove that. What does that put that? Okay, 36. So I bet you what we can do then is that we can put here like that that sign to all intakes. Oh, I put it up to 40. Well, then in that case, here's what we are going to do. We're going to do the thing that I said, try to limit what you're doing with it. We want one auto loader there raise its fire rate so now we're at 38.4 40.3 so let's do this let's get rid of one of its clips here and there we go we have the same fire rate the cooling is a little bit different but that's okay now we need recoil absorption so you can see down there our recoil is 2,385 or 1,524 uh, recoil a second. Our absorption is 110 a second. It's pretty shit, bud. 
So we need some recoil absorbers. So we will use this to our advantage. We will delete this cooler down here since we have too many. Bam, put a cooler there. Now oh, we have spare space here. We can come here, put another four meter there. Actually, we can put an eight meter here. Excellent. So that gets us some more recoil absorption. What are we looking at? So our absorption is 10, 1070. This is 590. So now what we can do is that if we want to, we can come here like this five meter now we have enough recoil absorption here so something else we could do so we can go ahead and extend that this way bam like that so now we have let's get rid of that that's gonna leave an open space but we don't need it because we already have too many coolers so our recoil absorption, we are almost there. So the thing that we can do is that we can just stick a little bit of recoil absorption down here. But we're gonna go ahead and put a local weapons controller down here. And then we will put a and there we go. We actually coincidentally have the exact same recoil and fire rate on all of these. So now we will set their fire rate to 38.4 RPM so they don't run themselves out of shells and it keeps it to where they fire consistently. And now let's set our turret base to number one. And let's do a test fire. Not a bad fire rate but I know a way to make it a little bit better. And that's gonna be synchronization, my friends. Not only does it look better, it actually acts better. And we also don't need that many barrels, like a guarantee. You wanna know how I know? We can come in here and that's one of the statistics right here. Barrel length for full propellant burn, six and a half. So we only need seven meters. So we could technically chop off that. So we have eight meters of barrel. And we are good. That is full propellant burn. But let's get to synchronization. If you have never messed with synchronization, it's very simple. So I want this to be to where it is just a consistent fire rate. They fire one after another to where it's evenly spaced. Here's how you do it. You see down here how it says 1.56 shots per second. Well, here's what we do. We take 1.56, divide it by three, we get 0.52. That's how long we want each gun to wait before firing. So we're going to start off with this gun. You see how it says weapon ID 2, weapon ID 1, weapon ID 3. We need to know that. So we're going to have this barrel kick it off. We are not going to have any synchronization on that one. So we want weapon ID 1, weapon on same turret, number 2, which is the correct one just wanted to double check and we will put our synchronization to 0.52 and then we will do the same here for number one Whoop. 0.52 and now let's test her again that's more of what i'm talking about and that's what i like to see now we have fully optimized this gun to the best of our ability made of fire at an equal fire rate now it's time for the turret cap now for the turret cap i know it's something that a lot of people struggle with so be patient here we go i'm going to show you the way let's get started so in this case i'm going to build something uh some kind of a ship that is flying the lines kind of like a, uh, a german ship from world war ii so, uh, having a reference image, or at least some kind of a style to reference, definitely helps whenever trying to make a turret cap. So, let us get started. So, to start off, normally, it doesn't matter what kind of shape I'm going to do, I'm going to make a heavy armor box around the internals, no matter what. There we go. There's just a simple heavy armor box. So. Now we're going to get on to the actual shape of the gun itself. So, 
I will begin with Normally another rule of thumb whenever making your turret caps is whenever you're making the rear end of it, do not do not cut off the rear of the turret and just leave it flat. And if you look at most turrets, they have a pretty good section, uh, depending on the ship and the cannon, they'll have a pretty decent sized section that's hanging off in the rear that swings around. So that's another way to make your cannons look a little bit more natural or at least a little bit better. So back here, I don't want to make this a full block going back, and I want a little bit of a sharper slope, so what I'll do is that I'll just use a peak here for now, and you'll see what we do here in a little bit. And just like that, there is the basis of our turret cap, but we are far from done. That is just the basic shape. So. Whenever making your turret caps and you do stuff like this where you have multiple different sharp angles but you don't have any good transition, decorations are your friend. So right here, simple one. We take the transition, which if you don't know how to pick up the block that uh, you're looking at and put it in your hand, it is the button R. So we will come here and if you don't know the decorations button is Control Shift X. That is how you place the block that you have in your hand as a decoration. So, we're going to be... Two like that. Move it up by half. Apply with mirror. Bam. There you go. There is a smooth transition right there. Super easy and simple. The next thing that's going to be nice and simple is covering up the simplique with metal. So, what we could do for that is we could actually... Hang on, I see something a little bit better that we could do. see how this looks yeah we can do that so what we do here then come here like that we will take this here we are going to hide the original mesh so I'm a cheeky little bastard like that put that to the half Then we are going to this here, up and down, scaling, hide. And if you don't even know the uh, regular decorations button just to access this menu, it is Control X. Move forward left. So, the only reason why I'm not stretching that decoration across all of this is because I don't want the texture of the oblique panel mixing in and glitching out with the texture of the metal. So, I'm just copying and pasting it to all this so it hides that decoration. So, yeah, that just adds a little bit of extra shape. So, now we're going to... we go now oh, the rear end is done and another thing we can do here is all right with that now we can start working on these mantlets and the barrels so we don't want this gun to just be open like that we know it looks okay as is it could be better so let's make it better. So we want to separate these barrels. We want to make it look like they are separated by a wall. So let's go ahead and start with that.
perfect like that but we want to add a little bit of a curve coming down here at the bottom so let's do that that's going to be a little bit more painful but we'll get there So our first step in order to hide those AA mantlets is that we are actually going to have to, uh, in order to do that, I would uh, put like an alloy pole and stretch it out to make it look like a better mantlet, but we don't want that to rotate with the barrel because it will rotate up and down with the barrel. So we are going to start off with something at the base of the barrel that we don't want recoiling back with the gun. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab a cram barrel because the new cram barrel textures, awesome. Especially since they're hollow, fantastic for barrels. So, now we are going to fix those mantlets, which I normally will just use an alloy pole and we will attach the alloy pole to the APS firing piece since it doesn't move and we'll just stretch it up like that and there's your upgraded mantlets now this is being done in the funny color because well the new generation of ships that I'm making, the Hellraiser Battalion, second generation, is using a little bit of a different color scheme. We're going to be using its color scheme, so don't worry, it'll look better whenever we get it on the ship. And now that we've fixed the barrels, we fixed our mantlets, we can kind of do a little bit of an overview of it and going, eh, those turrets look like their mantlets go up pretty high. Let's fix that. That's an easy fix. Bam. Like that. Manlets are looking a bit more spicy. A little bit better, I will say. And now it's time for the details. For the details, whenever I've got an example over there of a turret cap that was similar to this that I have made prior, helping out another friend. So you can add different details such as ladders. Don't be afraid of ladders. 
even different kinds of ladders, adding a little bit of railing up here, discoloring or putting a different color and a different material up on top of the turret, and other small details like this are recommended. That's just how you elevate the looks of your cannons, just a little bit more than your average person. And just like that, there is a decorated turret cap. Now for granted, yes, I did copy some of the decorations over from that because I've already made it. But I wanted to go some, through somewhat of a step-by-step -step for you all, just because I care. But with that, there are the basic decorations. And even if you look at this, there's not that many decorations. And it just looks so much better just with the little parts, just with the little letters there, little letters there. Are the railings up here, this colored part up here, just little tiny bits here and there is what helps elevate every single turret cap. And that go, those kinds of details go for everything, not just turret caps, but we're talking about turret caps here. So with that being said, that concludes our first step in making a brand new ship from the ground up. Thank you guys for watching and be sure to tune in for the next part of this where we begin whole construction. Thanks.